Hi all, I have an absolutely wonderful attacking game to show you. Playing white was Jacob Rosans, playing black was Adolf Anderson. Anderson is regarded as the quintessential romantic, and his sacrificial brilliancies like the Immortal game, which was Anderson Kiertsky in 1851, and the Evergreen game, for example, have stood the test of time. This is a less alone game, but it's absolutely wonderful. E4, we have Anderson playing E5, we have the King's Gambit. It's accepted, knight f3, g5, h4. Now usually, I would personally be scared to play this position with black, especially with g4, because you would think that sometimes white is getting his pawn, and basically you've fractured your structure. If white's eventually getting uh, f4, Sometimes the F file and the structure is compromised. We have knight e5 and we have knight f6, bishop c4, eyeing f7. Now sacking a pawn to defend that to try and get the initiative. Bishop d6, hitting the knight, d4 is played. Uh, now, here a very, very interesting move which kind of maybe changes the evaluation that you might have thought of this position if black had been too greedy. Can you guess the move played here? It does give black, it seems, an edge. Black to play, if I give you five seconds, what would you play here? Remember, white's threatening just to take that pawn and just enjoy the F file. And basically these pawns have been compromised. So what would you try and do about that? Okay, knight h5. A knight on the rim is dim, but here it is protecting f4. This one's already protected. This one's been dealt with because that, that diagonal's been blocked. And this is actually a bit of a liability, this h4 pawn. So there's a few things that are happening here. White dare not castle, really. If white castles, he didn't. Black could castle. And for example, this queen takes h4. Multiple threats here, like f6, because we've got that pin against the bishop, which is already hit by the knight. And we've got g3, this is nasty for white. If bishop h6, this position is just not very nice at all. Look at this. The dark squares are basically gone. So white tries ch this check. Uh, so this is an interesting point where if black just plays uh, king f8, knight c3, and this is OK uh, for white. There's no big problems. You'll note that uh, White's king is not that unsafe. In the game, we get a remarkable concept. C6, White takes, Black takes, just basically uh, clearing this E file by sacking an entire rook. King F8, an entire rook sack. But it introduces two resources into this position. The rook is taken. One resource is the e file generally, not just from a rook, but also the queen. The other resource is this diagonal here could be dangerous for white. That e, e knight, e5 knight, now that it's gone, there's some dangers brewing for white's king. And in fact, black prevents white's king castling with knight g3. And now there's a big idea of queen e7 check immediately in this position. So it's black that has what seems to be a very, very promising, aggressive, dynamic position. He's also hitting the rook. The rook goes to h2, keeping guard of the h4 pawn. So white's kind of in a bind here. And in fact, in this position, there's already basically a forced win. It wasn't actually played here. Uh, bishop f5, there might actually be a better move in the form of queen e7 check, believe it or not, or queen e8. Because can you see an idea in this position? Black to play. This didn't happen in the game, but this is a crushing idea available to black in this position. What would you play here if I give you five seconds? Okay, knight e2. Yeah, supported by the queen, threatening g3. So for example here, g3. We can take here, and if we take immediately, this is not as good because there's g3 holding h1 as a queening square. But if we throw in the check, now this is much better version because here we take and we've got bishop f1 to guide in g2 
later. So Black's doing very well there. Yeah. Uh, you might think, hold on a sec, what about uh, King E1? Just King G7, and we're threatening Rook E8 as well as the Bishop. So yeah, this it's uh, much better for Black there. So that's a really interesting continuation. Just just the concepts of Queen E7 here with Knight E2. In the game we have Bishop F5. There's still multiple threats. Black is threatening the Bishop uh, immediately. That's protected by moving it here. But now King G7 and there's still multiple threats. Qu Rook E8, Queen check. Knight C3 is played. We have Rook E8 check. King F2. And here it gets really intense now for White's king safety after Queen B6. You can see that Black's position is dominant. White's kind of a prisoner here. This bishop unable to move. The king stranded there. The rook stranded there. These these three pieces are all pretty stranded, spectator pieces. And in fact, after knight a4, this is pretty desperate already. Black uh, has got some beautiful ideas available. For example, Queen b4. This wasn't played. For example, c3, what could black play here? If I give you five seconds. This just shows how dangerous this is. Queen takes, yeah, because of the check, check, and mate. Shows how dangerous this knight is in conjunction with the rook. So this is a really dangerous position. Maybe queen b4 was, you know, technically one of the strongest moves. But this is pretty strong. Queen a6, it's in the knight anyway. And still threatening this this brilliant idea, basically. You know, if if C3, I think we can we just transpose into that brilliant idea we've just seen. Okay, so the knight actually moved back. But now a truly fantastic resource is made use of here, which shows the sheer power of Anderson, why he's such a celebrated player, why his his classics uh, still in people's minds today, but this is absolutely beautiful. This next move, what would you play with black in this position? Okay, it's bishop e5. Yeah, this is you might not understand the threat here, I don't want to spoil it. But one thing to note is if this is taken. Then this diagonal opens up. It's it's lethal. This diagonal we just uh, play the check. <laughs> it's, it's hopeless because escape squares have already been taken by that that pesky knight. Yeah. So uh, white played uh, in this position. The move a4. And now, can you see? What Anna Fanderson played, absolutely beautiful stuff. I'll let you pause the video, try and work it out. Clue, forcing moves, check them out, even the outrageous ones. Okay, with the pressure on d4 now, this is celebrated with queen f1, a beautiful drag and drop tactic, getting the queen away from d4. Bishop takes d4 check. There is bishop e3 technically, but now what do you play? What's more powerful here to play? The most powerful move. Okay, it's rook takes e3, threatening double discovered check mate. Much stronger. That is much stronger than, say, bishop takes. For example, here, white might live on a few moves. But black's better there anyway. But uh, with rook takes e3, there's really no defense here. In the game, king g1, and now rook e1, check, mate. Because that knight again is covering escape squares. Queen's pinned. There's nothing to put in the way. It's checkmate. A truly beautiful attacking game, and also it kind of creates some new light on playing g4 in conjunction with knight h5. How mega dangerous that could be 
with a knight on g3 you might just have to sacrifice your a8 rook though to get the full dynamic potential of the knight on g3 as this game fully demonstrates wonderful stuff i hope you'll agree comments questions likes shares appreciated thanks very much